Hi guys, so this is the third of our videos looking at functions. We've already had a look at mappings. We have defined what a function is. That is a mapping where each input has only got one output. And now we're going to think about the meaning of domain and range when it comes to functions. Now, a lot of students get very confused by this. They, they, they can't remember the definition. Um, but what I've done is I've tried to highlight the thing that's really important, right? So domain is the set of all input values. And the range is the set of all output values, right? So this is the thing you need to remember. Domain is the inputs. Range is the outputs. Okay, domain, inputs, range, outputs. Domain, inputs, range, outputs. That's the thing that you really need to remember. And that means that if you prefer, since the domain is the set of all input values, we can just refer to it as the x's. And since the range is the set of all output values, we can refer to that as the y's. So if you prefer, you can think of it that way. Domain are the x values, the range is the y values. Okay, let's put it into practice. Let's say we've got a particular function here, right? This function is f of x is equal to x squared, okay? Now you've got to think to yourself, what are all of the possible input values, right? What are all the values of x that I could have? So I'm going to go through all of these possible values of x and see if the function is valid, right? So let's take, for example, x is 1. Is the function defined at that point? Yes, it is. x is 2. Yes. x is 3. Yes. x is 4. And I could keep going 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to infinity. The function is always defined for all of these values of x. And the same if I go in the other direction. If I go negative 1, the function is defined. Negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And all the way to negative infinity, the function is defined. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if you go from all the way across at negative infinity, all the way through to positive infinity, all of those values of x are accepted. So we could say that the domain, remember the domain is all of the set of possible input values. The domain is all of the values from negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, any value of x is acceptable as an input to this particular function, right? If I took 100 million, I could still put it into the function, I'd have 100 million squared, right? If I took negative 43, I could have it as an input function because I have negative 43 squared, right? So from negative infinity to positive infinity, those are all legitimate inputs to my function. So now let's think about the range. Let's think about the outputs. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the y values, right? I'm going to go along this axis and ask, can I have those as values? Well, can I have 1 as an output value? Yes, I can. Can I have 2 as an output value? Yes, I can. 3, yes, 4, yes, 5, yes, 6, yes. And if I was to keep going upwards in the y direction, would I still have y values? Yes, I would, right? I can keep going up forever and ever and ever. I still have a y value. But can I have a y value of negative 1? No, right? Because the function doesn't go down that far. Or negative 2, no. Or negative a half, no. In fact, the function only begins at this point here where y is equal to zero. So we can say actually that the range here are all the values of y that are greater than or equal to zero. That is the negative values here, right? And going on to negative infinity, those don't exist, right? There are no negative output values for this function, okay? So, so clarify, domain and range. Domain is the set of all possible inputs, and that goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Right, that's the domain. The range is the set of output values, and those are only from zero upwards. Right, we don't have any negative values of one.
Now, one final thing, when we write this, right, it's a, probably a better way for us to write that. And that is to, to write it like this, right? That X is a member of the set of all the real numbers. Okay, now that looks a bit complicated, doesn't it? We don't like new letters and freaky looking letters, right? But it doesn't actually, it's not actually that complicated once you understand what the letters mean, right? So this thing here, the little R with the extra line is the set of all the real numbers. And that just means all of the numbers, including decimals, going from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So it kind of just means that thing there, right? All those numbers. What does this thing here mean, right? That is set notation, and it means something like is a member of the set. Right? So if I write... X is a member of the set of all the real numbers, right? And those three little letter things. What it really means is that X can be any number from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So really what you want to do is you want to get used to writing things like that, even though it looks complicated and weird. Actually, it's quite, an, uh, you know, once you understand what the letters mean, it's quite an easy concept. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so uh, we are going to have a look at this particular function here. This is the function f of x is equal to the square root of x. Now, remember in the previous video on mappings, we said the square root of x has actually got positive and negative values. And so it's a, a one to many function. So if this, uh, if this is a, a function, remember, we can't have more than one output for every input. So what we mean by this is this is plus the square root of x, right? We only take the positive value to ensure that we don't have more than one output for each input. Okay, well, let's think again. What are the possible inputs here? What are the inputs? What are the x values? Well, let's consider all of the possible x values, right? Well, I can have, I can have one as an input. I can have two as an input. I can have three as an input, I can have four as an input, I can have five as an input, and all the way to positive infinity. But what I can't have is I can't have negative values of x as my input, right? I can't have that because I can't square root a negative number. So how do I write my domain? My domain is all the values of x that are greater than zero, right? It's these values here, okay? Now then, how do I think about my range? What's my range gonna be? Well, I take my output values, right? So I'm gonna go along the y-axis and ask what output values can I have? Well, one is an output value, two is an output value, three would also be an output value, and I could keep going up to positive infinity. I'm always going to have outputs, right? Because if x always increases, y is also going to increase. But what's the thing that I can't have? I can't have negative values of y, right? Because the function doesn't produce them. So my range is y is also greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so what, are my, what is my domain? My domain is the set of all the input values. Okay. that what's my range it's the set of all the output values which is that let's do another one let's have a look at this again i'm going to do this to illustrate the fact that we can actually decide the domain for ourselves so here what i've got is i've got the function f of x is equal to x squared plus one but what I want to do now is I want to determine the domain and I'm going to make the domain x is greater than or equal to negative one, but less than or equal to positive two, right? So this thing here, that thing is the domain and it's a domain that I've defined. So now what I want to do is I want to consider that a little bit. So what I'm saying is that the domain that we have, we are only considering the values from negative one all the way up to positive two, right? So we're only going to consider the function from this value here, 
all the way through to this one here. So if you were to look at the function, right, the, the bit of the function that we're interested in is only this part here, the bit in green. That's the only thing that we're interested in. Everything else we're not interested in, right? So strictly speaking, that thing here, right? Uh, if we're talking about with the domain between negative one and two, is only defined by the green bit of the curve. Well, if that's the case, then what is our range, right? What are the set of output values that we can have? Well, the minimum output value that we have is one, right? Because there are no output values lower than one. And the maximum output value we can have is five. Because right? there are no output values that are greater than five. So our, our, dome, our range, sorry, our set of output values is everything between here and here. So we can then say that the range is y is uh, greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 5. Right? So we've got to be a little bit careful sometimes. Right? If we've defined our domain to be a certain set of values, then we need to think carefully what will our range be and the way we can do that is actually best by sketching it out. Okay. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Remember, what's the key takeaway of this lesson? Domain is the inputs, the x values, the range is the outputs, the y values. I hope that was helpful. I will see you again.